at me. I'm not, I promise. You will. I'm not, I'm gonna read my book. Hi everybody, I am just gonna make a cup of tea and then I will start the video and have a chat to you about my new relationship and... Did I hear tea? Yes, do you want a cup? Yes please. Okay, have you got a mug? <laughs> Hi darling. I think it's too bright out here actually. Oh! <laughs> right, I'm gonna try and film out here but it keeps getting so bright, which I'm not complaining about because the weather is lovely, but it's not very good for filming. So we'll see how we go and work it out as we go. In each of our lives, we will all go through loss. Unfortunately, it is literally the only part of life that is unavoidable. And I've come to learn that that isn't something we should be scared of. Instead, we should use it as a fuel to be more spontaneous and more, you know, full of life instead of using it as something as we're just trying to avoid it and we don't talk about it. And I feel like the approach to death and loss is very English. Nobody talks about it and nobody really likes to talk about it and it's very taboo because it's just something that isn't very nice to talk about and I'm not saying I enjoy talking about it because I really really don't but I do think it is important to talk about it. In my last video I shared that I was in a relationship and for those of you who don't know I was actually married five years ago and he passed away so I was a very young widow and I didn't really have a clue what was going on or where my life was going because I'd experienced this thing that no one else my age had experienced. Him passing away wasn't unexpected, it wasn't something that was a shock, um, but that doesn't mean that that cushions the blow, it's still a very impactful thing. Um, and in his last few days, you know, I spent 24 hours in the hospice and sort of watching him decline and seeing that and ultimately witnessing another person pass away was very I feel like if that was a show or a film that would be where my character would suddenly have like a would have a character arch and I would suddenly change who I was because it was a very big turning point in my life and initially I dealt with it very very badly. I would drink a lot, I would go out all the time and just try and numb everything that I was feeling because it was so confusing and I was so young, um, still am. It was such a difficult time as you can imagine and like I said I dealt with it by drinking heavily which is why I'm now sober, I'm teetotal, you can see a video um, of me explaining that here. And I went through the whole process of PTSD and I still sometimes do now. I still wake up in the night with bad dreams and you know, things like that. And I never really thought about dating or being in a relationship, at least not seriously, until I met this man that I'm with now. I actually dated before I met him, him with a capital H, so mysterious. Ooh. I started dating for the wrong reasons. I had this empty dark void in me that I felt I could fill with somebody else and that is not true and that is never gonna be true. If you have something negative in yourself, you can't counteract it with somebody else. You have to fill it first and then find the person that you're meant to be with afterwards. I was in a very unhealthy dating cycle and I was definitely with someone and probably hurt them quite a bit because I was not ready for a relationship. Not ready at all, at all. And then after that, I wasn't even sure I could love somebody because I didn't love myself. I didn't love the world I was in because it just seemed pretty crap, to be honest, because I witnessed this person die in a very graphic way and I also experienced another loss sort of a year or two after that and it was just so much rubbish because I just only saw the negative in life and I couldn't possibly think how love could come from this life because it just 
couldn't, how could it, it's impossible. And then when I met him, we clicked basically straight away. And it was an interesting first meeting story, which I'll get into in another video. But essentially everything aligned. We both didn't drink. We were both very creative. There is a bee. We're both very creative. We like to have deep philosophical chats about things and we're both very entrepreneurial and we just could talk for hours and hours and hours on end without getting bored of one another or, you know, without all the bad stuff, basically. And so when we got together, we were very open about sort of our pasts and he has got an interesting past as well. I like to call it interesting. He's got an interesting past as well and we kind of talked about it and talked about how it shaped us as a person and how it developed us into who we are now. Obviously, it hasn't always been easy. Sometimes I am irrational, to say the least. I argue, I'm very argumentative, I'm very stubborn and being in a relationship with an equally passionate person, you can sometimes clash but I think when we were having these arguments we were actually getting to know each other more and getting to know who we were on a deeper level and it just solidified that we were meant to be together. A question I got asked after sort of announcing that I was in a relationship was does he know about my late husband and of course he does he knows more than anybody does about that relationship that I was in and he is very supportive about when I need to talk about it, if I need to talk about it, if I want to. Um, he's very supportive about when I'm sensitive about things and he also has to put up with a lot of paranoia that he might get ill. When you lose someone that you love or loved to a health complication, you suddenly become, or at least I did, come very, very paranoid that the people around you are all just going to sort of drop off one by one. So anytime he's unwell or anytime, he just has to have like a headache or he coughs once and I go, you're right. Basically he can't sniffle without me thinking he's got the literal plague. <laughs> And he's very supportive about that. He always makes sure sort of to get things checked out if I ask him to. And, you know, he's very aware as to why I'm like that and where that comes from. I think finding love after loss is such an interesting thing to do because you've obviously lost someone who is very, very important in your life. But you've also found this new person who is exciting and you love them very, very much. And he has become my best friend, my best friend. We live together and we do a lot of things together. We're interested in a lot of the same things, but we're also different too. And we teach each other things that we otherwise wouldn't know. Has that been on my nose this whole time? If that bug was on my nose that whole time, ignore it. If you have lost someone, and if you feel like you're being pressured into finding somebody else or you feel you want to find somebody else, that's great. But it all comes down to you and what you perceive to be right and what you feel. It might be that you don't think you could find anyone ever again and someone walks into your life and they just blow you away and you cannot not be with that person. Equally, you might think, I don't want to be with anyone again, and you never do, and that's okay as long as you're happy in that decision. Loving after loss has taught me so much about humanity and about, you know, finding a new love in a life that feels so dark. It's like a lightness and a happiness that I don't think I could have felt otherwise. It just makes me feel so grateful and so lucky. He has taught me so much about loving that I never knew before. He has taught me how to be myself and be my most authentic self, and most importantly, how to be happy. Obviously, you don't need someone else to tell you how to be happy, but sometimes you need that person or something to trigger the happiness in you, whether that is a person, a book, a dog, something and loving after loss has taught me about the goodness in life. I am just so excited to share more about this relationship and, and more about what I went through 
five years ago and to just open up a bit with you all and hopefully help some of you along the way. Thank you so much for watching and thank you, thank you for all of your support. The last video was so nerve wracking, I was so nervous, but I'm so glad I did it and I'm so grateful you're all on this journey with me. Please do get involved in the comments and chat to me about your experiences with loving and loss and anything you want to talk about. If you have any questions, just pop them in the comments and I will address them in a future video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Becca and I talk about a bit of everything, but right now I'm in the process of talking to you all about my life and my relationship. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day, have a lovely life, and I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you then. Bye. End of credits, fam. Oh, so good to finally like be able to talk to you all. Oh, do you hear that? That's a plane, but end of credits fan. You get to see where I am because how lovely is that? I'm at my um, I'm at my partner's parents' house, and they live in the middle of nowhere, and it's so beautiful. Let's just take a minute to listen to the birds as they stop. But thank you so much for being here and your comments. I love that you mentioned you're on the end of credits fam. It's amazing. Um, I will reply to you all as soon as this video goes up. Thank you, 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 end of credits fam. And I will see you in the next one and in the comments. Bye.